Hey, my name's Justin, and this is The Art of Repair. And today, I'm going to show you how to bring that crummy, nasty, old, gunky, cruddy solder paste back to life. Alright, so this tip, trick, whatever, is about as old as time. I am definitely not the one who came up with it. And I'm going to be honest, I'm not sure who really did. I feel like this is some beginning of time stuff that just has always been around. But... I thought I'd share it with you anyway. So, first and foremost, let's go ahead and jump on over here and take a look at this solder paste. Um, just a little bit of solder paste anatomy here. Um, solder paste itself is actually made up of millions and billions of little baby solder balls suspended in a flux. Okay. Now, the deal is, you know, as flux kind of activates and dissipates on your board, the same thing is gonna happen with your solder paste. So if you move it around here, this stuff, uh, I left it out all night. Um, yesterday it was a lot easier to move around. Um, you can kind of tell that it's, you know, kind of holds its shape a little bit instead of being a little more fluid. Um, the deal here is the flux itself is, it's heat activated. So just ambient room temperature and being exposed to air itself is gonna cause it to dissipate and kind of like dry up. Now. The problem with this is a lot of people don't even know how to use solder paste to begin with, so they buy the stuff and they use it, they leave it open for a couple hours, and that couple hours turns into five times over the next six months, and then they've got this really cruddy, nasty solder paste, and they don't know what to do with it, so they throw it out and they go buy more. Now, just a disclaimer here, uh, before we actually get started, what I'm about to show you is not acceptable in a production line environment. You cannot do this in a situation where everything is measured and bought to be exact. Um, what I'm about to show you is basically for hand reballing only and should, again, not be used in any sort of actual industrial production line. Everything on a production line is specific, especially when you're dealing with micro components, solder paste, and anything else that's gonna be that exact, okay? Um, the reason we're able to do this by hand is because we generally don't have to stick to the same standards that they do. Uh, when you produce, you know, you know, a hundred thousand boards, they have to be perfect. Um, you're not going to have somebody looking at every single one like you would be looking at your work doing individual one-off, you know, uh, BGA reballing or something like that. So again, don't use this if you're working for a big company, and don't tell them I told you. <laughs> Anyway, let's go ahead and move on to the actual technique here on how to bring this stuff back to life. Um, like I said, you can kind of see here it's a little bit gunky and gummy. Um, and like I said, this is made of two things. It's made of flux and it's made of solder balls. The, the solder balls themselves are not changing size. And we talked about how flux activates and dissipates. So that leaves only one option. The flux needs to be refreshed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my little jar of flux here. I'm gonna take another toothpick. And you don't need a lot. Calm down. It's not that big a deal. You know, once you add this stuff in there, you ain't taking it back out. So just remember that. Well, I mean, I, technically, I guess you could leave it overnight, but who wants to do that? So, oh, what do we got here? Got myself a little bit of flux here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just start stirring it in the, uh, the solder paste itself. And hopefully we'll see that it's going to get a little bit easier to work with. See, it's deceptive. You, you just want to keep adding more in there, but not always the best. So I'm going to put a little bit more in there like that. And I'm just going to stir it up a little bit. Um, I'm just using a toothpick. It's not that big a deal. All right, let's add a little bit more, but I think we're pretty much there. And I will show you the new consistency. Alright, so before, whenever I would swirl the, the toothpick around, it would keep a rigid shape and it would look a little drier. But now, you can actually see that it's kind of falling down on its own here and there's a little, a little bit more of a sheen to it. See that? 
There we go. We have healthy solder paste again. Again, I didn't come up with this. This has been around as long as I've been doing this, and it's probably been around as long as your dad's been doing this. So, um, yeah, that's how you bring back the solder paste. Oh, hey, and before you get out of here, I want to share two really cool fun facts about solder paste. The first one has to do with what I was talking about earlier in terms of not being able to use this in industrial use. Um, as the flux actually melts away or activates and dissipates, if any of those solder balls are exposed, they can actually also oxidize. And whenever you run this stuff and heat it up, you can actually form two opposing uh, coalescing like solder balls instead of just one. So cool fun fact number one. Cool fun fact number two is did you know for over 250 grams of solder paste, there is on average almost 1 billion solder balls inside. What? Are you serious? Anyway, I thought that was super cool. So, um, yeah, catch you later. So, hey, I really hope you learned something today. In fact, if you uh, liked the video, go and hit right over down there and hit the like button. And if you're not already subscribed and you want to start checking out all my stuff weekly, just head on over to the other side and hit subscribe. Now, if you are super about it and you want to learn everything that I'm trying to teach, whoop, boom, hit that notification bell, all right? It's really important. That way, every single time I upload something, it pops up right on your phone, your computer, whatever you're doing, all right? And hey, check it out. Maybe you have an opinion about what I'm doing right now. Or maybe you even used my technique on a repair and it worked for you. If any of these things apply to you, or maybe you just want to say hi, hit me up with a comment. I love them. Seriously, I love the comments. They're my favorite. Every time I get one on my phone, I'm like, oh yeah. And if you are one of those people that is about to look me up on Instagram um, to ask me what equipment I use, well, guess what? I already got you. Don't even worry about it. Hit the description. Boom. Right down at the bottom has everything in a big old list. If there's something that I didn't put on there, then hit me up on Instagram, the phone guy, check out my stuff, then hit me up and let me know what you need. And don't forget, I'm Justin, and this is The Art of Repair.